Now we're ready for the final round. The top two from each of the first two races in a battle of who can get to the bottom first and collect the championship points. There you see the competitors. Off they go. Green Gang taking, taking an early lead down to the bottom with Team Phoenix right behind. They split and go the opposite directions. Golden Wisps now with a great lead down front. They're into the second to last half pipe. Who's going to get there to the bottom? Look at this. Several down there. Will Team Phoenix get it? Green Gang is also down there. Phoenix fighting with him. It's a Green Gang beating Team Phoenix just barely. And then the Golden Wisps coming through in third. And it will be the Ruby Rollers coming through in fourth. There they go. 15 points to the Green Gang. Couldn't even really see it down there at the bottom because of the camera angle, but there is your podium. Green Gang move eight points clear. Ruby Rollers for second in the championship. Then it's Blackjacks. Halloween, friends and ghouls, we have gathered marbles from all around the world, glowing deep within from mysterious forces. In the blocks they are, ready to launch down a trough to win this edition of the Halloween race. Ectoplasm is out in front, but jack o lantern comes to his left, trying to pull even, narrowly gets the lead, bouncing back and forth, nudging each other, jack o lantern falls back, Ghoster in third, now moves to the outside, pushing Jack-O-Lantern into the wall. Meanwhile, Ectoplasm is continuing to get away. Over the jump, past the rock. Continue down, stretching that lead. Find the block, and they do. Ghoster, with a lot of speed, into the lead. Breezed right around Ectoplasm. Now has his sights set on the bottom of this course. Past the block he goes, is anybody else going to enter the frame? Upper right there you see back behind, Jack-O-Lantern still in second. Oh mind that skeleton! A poor soul that wandered onto the track despite our warnings not to do so. Ghoster slowing to a crawl, but here comes Slimy Blob in third, trying to catch up to Jack-O-Lantern. Jack-O-Lantern sees the speed differential, almost like he's flipped the DRS open, here he comes! Jack-O-Lantern on the inside now, to the outside! Sold him the dummy and into the lead. Jack-O-Lantern is going to win the race. Ghoster, will he hold on to second? It looks like he will. Slimy Blob now, for the bottom step of the podium. Yes, he has it. Who will come next? Oh, this is going to be close between these two. I the Demon trying to give chase, but will not be able to catch Ectoplasm, who fell from the lead back to fourth. I the Demon... Actually, we have not seen any of Will of the Wisp yet. I wonder if Will of the Wisp is stuck somewhere. Really scary comes through. 11 seconds back of fifth place. Ah, there you go. Will of the Wisp stuck back in seventh place and stranded up on the course in the dead of the night. Bonjour et bienvenue pour cette course de billes sur sable, une course qui s'annonce très très belle hein, puisque nous avons 230 mètres de circuit pour 40 mètres de dénivelé. Choisissez vos favoris car c'est parti A la sortie des starting blocks, les positions, nous avons donc rouge foncé en première position, blanc en deuxième position, suivi de noir, violet, vert, citron vert, bleu foncé, diamant, orange, rouge, numéro 3, et en queue de peloton, c'est donc bleu et jaune sur cette première ligne droite. Un départ un petit peu sage, hein pas trop de vitesse, pas trop de dépassement... C'est une course qui sera gagnée donc sur l'endurance, hein. 230 mètres c'est beaucoup pour des billes. Ça y est, rouge foncé accélère le rythme, mais suivi de très près par blanc et noir. Ah, L'écart se creuse entre noir et violet, hein. le peloton se forme, violet se retrouve en tête de peloton. Rouge foncé qui mène la danse. Ou rattrapé de très près par blanc, 
Et ça y est, l'attaque se lance. L'attaque se lance. Rouge foncé et blanc qui partent en attaque. Et Noir n'arrive pas à garder le rythme et qui se retrouve tête de peloton suivi de violet, vert, bleu foncé. Et oui, c'est donc rouge numéro 3 qui a gagné une place déjà. Hein. Déjà des dépassements euh, s'annonce 1 minute 10 dans la course. Ce n'était pas le premier dépassement et je peux vous assurer que ce ne sera pas le dernier. Hein. Cette course est très très compétitive. Voilà, en rouge foncé et blanc qui sont véritablement coude à coude alors qu'ils s'engagent vers la première division du circuit. On choisit de passer par le bas puis par le haut. En tête de peloton, un noir en troisième position suivi de violet et vert. Blanc essaie de, de rattraper cet écart mais n'y arrive pas vraiment. Ça y est, on rentre dans la tresse, un élément très important parce que les billes s'entrechoquent et se croisent et beaucoup de positions se changent. Regardez, Blanc a pris la tête, oui c'est bien ça, Blanc a pris la tête. Ça y est, le dépassement c'est fait alors qu'on passe sous le pont. Et c'est Violet en troisième position qui a dépassé Noir alors qu'on est dans une division. Et regardez, Rouge numéro 3 qui fait une attaque mais... Ah non, ce ne sera pas suffisant pour Rouge numéro 3 qui reprend sa place dans le peloton. Blanc donc qui mène alors qu'on passe sur le tremplin, et ça y est, une accélération, mais euh, rouge foncé ne lâche pas l'affaire alors qu'on rentre dans la spirale. C'est un duel en sommet entre blanc et rouge foncé. Alors qu'on rentre dans le halfpipe, on a blanc, rouge foncé, violet, rouge numéro 3, vert et bleu foncé. Ça y est, hein, on rentre dans une série de virages serrés. Et regardez la bataille pour la troisième place, ferrage, nous avons violet et rouge numéro 3 au coude à coude Attention, un blanc hein, qui toujours mène la danse alors qu'on rentre dans une autre division. Ah, c'était un bon raccourci, mais personne ne va le prendre. La piste s'élargit, c'est peut-être une bonne occasion pour un dépassement. Oui, attention, rouge foncé qui fait l'attaque et non, ce sera pas assez. Hein, ce sera pas assez. Attention, rouge numéro 3 qui prend la piste du haut oh, et qui rebondit sur un mur. Ce n'est pas assez alors qu'il rentre dans l'entonnoir. C'est toujours blanc en tête en suivi de rouge foncé. Puis au coude à coude encore un violet et rouge numéro 3. Attention, on rentre dans les zigzags, hein. toujours les mêmes positions, ça ne bouge pas mais ça s'attaque de part en part. Regardez la troisième position, cette bataille qui fait rage. Ça y est, ça s'élargit encore, peut-être une occasion de passer pour rouge foncé. Et non, 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 c'est blanc qui va vraiment prendre de l'avance et qui va peut-être gagner cette place. Qu'est-ce qu'on apporte à la fin Et regardez, regardez sur la droite de votre écran rouge numéro 3, a dépassé violet et se retrouve en troisième position. Très très belle progression. Oh là là, attention, la pression monte puisqu'il va rattraper, attention il va rattraper rouge foncé, non, hein, ce ne sera pas pour cette fois, ce ne sera pas pour cette fois, et ça y est, le dépassement se fait au creux du virage, très 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 beau dépassement de la part du rouge numéro 3, qui maintenant, maintenant va faire l'attaque sur blanc, sur blanc, et ça y est, dépasse blanc, et prend la tête, rouge numéro 3, qui était vraiment au milieu de peloton, en arrière de peloton, et qui se retrouve leader de cette course, alors qu'il reste très très peu de distance, oui ça y est, c'est la dernière ligne 3, rouge numéro 3 va remporter cette course, c'est fait Rouge numéro 3 premier, et violet deuxième, blanc s'est arrêté juste devant l'arrivée Et oui, oh là 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 là, toutes ces billes qui s'arrêtent devant l'arrivée Donc c'est donc rouge numéro 3 qui remporte cette course Mesdames et messieurs, quelle course Si vous en voulez plus, n'oubliez pas de vous abonner à la chaîne You may recognize these from the San Marlboro Rally and look at the 8th spot, the cult favorite red number 3 first appearance in one of these events in a long time for red number three. We'll see how they sort out. Got a lot of sorting just going on on the gangway down to the entry chute. Now they're out onto the funnel. Rotating and rotating, trying to stay as far out as possible on that center drop. The question is, who is going to do the best job at that? You'll see the speed pick up. It's angular momentum that we're dealing with here. Oh, and somebody's rotating around that middle one. I don't know if that's Super Turtle, might be Slimer. Quite a few down in that, that difficult area to tell. The speed picks up so much. Look at him rotating around. All right, it's Snake's Tub down through there. It was Dragon's Egg and Slimer. Red number three can't do that come from behind like he did in that first race. Summer Sky, Marley, McMarvel Face. Look at how many are getting checked off by the minute. Well, by the second, technically. Wisp of Darkness, H2 Blue. We're now down to the final 10. Blue Moon, now Silverbolt. 
rotating around the outside. Who is that that's going to pick up this win? Five marbles remaining. Comet. Starman for fifth. And he's holding out Crazy Cat's Eye down to the top three. These are your podium finishers either way. It'll be Fireball. Waiting for that second place marble to drop. Black Knight. And that means that your winner... Oh, come on. There you go. <laughs> Blue Smoke doing another four second. 4.25. The winning margin of victory for Blue Smoke. Pushing against them. Jungle Jumpers or Rangers. Midnight Wisps and the Shining Swarm. Jungle Jumpers up top. They hold the narrow lead. Now a Rangers edging ahead. Now watch lane three. Lane three into second here. Oh, it's going to be very close. Midnight Wisps, I think, are going to do it. Yes, they will by seven hundredths of a second. They pip the Rangers at the end. Now that does not completely dash the hopes of the Rangers for winning the Marble Olympics. While Quicksilver maintains his lead at the top of the San Marble Rally standings, he'll have some work to do, although there you see a mixed up starting grid in the blocks, and off they go. That opening obstacle that was in front in the last race has been removed, so all marbles continuing past it and working their way down. But what a start by red number three who moves up into first place over El Capitan. Boyo Loco taking that top line who was running up in the front of the last race as well. Wisp of Darkness up there. Slimer, who won the previous event. Summer Sky. Lollipop is up there too. There's one of several parts of this race course where you can go over the wall and keep going. I know the marbles are quite happy about that because it gives them a little bit of a margin of error. Now look at these top few. Glassy entering the picture too. Along with Slimer, those two. Running in lockstep. Still a few lengths apart. Meanwhile, up front. Look at the gap up there. Ooh, Slimer, I think, took that bottom line. Is that going to help him or hurt him? And it's going to hurt Glassy. Moving up into third place. Oh, there's red number three stranded. 
and El Capitan gets by and then gets stuck. El Capitan also gets stuck along with several marbles and they dislodge him. Who got up into first place? It's Wisp of Darkness. Wisp of Darkness holds on to the front in front of Glassy. Is that uh, crazy? Oh my gosh, it's crazy cat's eye. That in itself is a little bit crazy. Not had very many good finishes so far this season. El Capitan did get going and I think is back there in fourth place. Oh, look at how high they're getting. Getting some air coming through the S's. But it's still Wisp of Darkness out in front. A big beneficiary of a couple of key elements of this course. Both that wide carousel where they come back together and then that little grid. Here is that gate, another part that sometimes gives marbles some pretty good wax as they come through. Ooh, there was a hard hit. I don't know if that was Fantasy or who that was that uh, really the, not necessarily the beneficiary, it might have been Comet as I say that. Now Wisp of Darkness reclaiming that top spot in front of Glassy. Crazy Cat's Eye in third. They slow to a crawl with the finish line in sight. Remember, it's a hard left-hander. Glassy goes to the outside, now cuts back to the inside, drafting. Under the tunnel they go. Will he be able to make the move? No, he won't. Wisp of Darkness takes first over Glassy. Crazy Cat's Eye, Summer Sky, now Capitan. I don't see Quicksilver up there in the top ten. There he comes across the line with a thin coating of sand on him, but he's going to take a hit. Look at that, 17th place for the championship leader. Red number three up in only 11th place, only getting five points on him. And everything helps, but not quite what they had hoped. Each team have chosen their fastest member. Here in Group A, we are off. Team Galactic and the Hazers out in front. Minty Maniacs coming close behind. I believe that's Crazy Cat's Eye. That's Blue Eye that is back in fourth, trying to fend off a couple challenges back behind. But such a quick race. It's Minty Maniacs with a big lead. That starts to come down, and it's Galactic. Galactic have taken the lead and the win here in Group A. My goodness, these races go by quickly. That was fast. I believe that was Hazers back in third in front of Jawbreakers. Yes, it was. Crazy Cat's Eye, Quicksilvers, Rojo Rollers, and Chocolatiers rounding everything out. About four and a half seconds, separating first to eighth. Our final. Will we see a come-from-behind champion? We'll know in a little over 90 seconds. Watch that orange marble in second. They have fought back and forth through the whole duration of this event, all season. They've had bursts of speed. They actually set the event record in the underwater with a 13-12, a stupendous time, and still only managed silver. That stings them a little bit. They're trying to push as hard as they possibly can right now because there is no tomorrow. There is no next event. They have to win the Marble Olympics here. They cannot wait. They cannot put a single roll wrong. Meandering down this course, fighting back and forth. I know there are other marbles who are challenging for the podium as well. They would love to get a medal here. Oceanics, Thunderbolts also up there. Those two blue marbles going back and forth. We head down here into the final quarter of this race. Will it be gold for the Rangers? And will it be a Marble Olympics championship? Their fans getting antsy as can be. Is anybody going to come up there and challenge them? Really, at this point, they don't have to win the event to win the Marble Olympics. They've got a good enough lead out front, though. It's not going to matter. The finish line is nearly in sight. Will the Rangers be able to hold? Look at Team Galactic. Look at Team Galactic. They are going to win the race. Rangers lose the battle but win the war. The Rangers lose out to Team Galactic right at the end. But they are your 2017 Marble Olympics champions. The fans are going crazy. They got enough points to win the Marble Olympics.